Welcome to my library, dear guest. My name is Cole, and I will be your storyteller. Today is a rather special occasion, as 100 of you have decided to become regulars. I greatly appreciate your support, and I hope you will continue to enjoy your time in my humble abode, listening to these tales documented by people just like you and me. That all being said, I hope you will enjoy this special reading. I've collected three stories to share with you, so sit back and relax as I begin with today's first story. Story number one. Player pays the DM for a critical hit in PvP. By the author Kilo10. Long story, but I hope you find it enjoyable. TLDR at the end. So a long time ago, about 20 years now, I got invited by a friend to D&D style homebrew a game. We had played in several games together, so I said sure. The cast is the DM, homebrew game, but pretty much D&D, the lady, my friend, playing a human fighter cleric type, the guy, another human ranger, or maybe just a fighter, it's been a while, and me, the half-elf thief. Prior to joining the game, I asked them what they needed. Prior to joining the game, I asked them what they needed in the party. They were running into a lot of traps, so they needed someone to disarm them. Cue me becoming a thief. I told them I play a thief, house burglar type, not a combat guy. I also told, out of character, the guy would be a cowardly thief, hiding behind the big bad fighters. Give them a chance to shine, and hey, it could make for some good roleplay. We meet up at the DM's house, get introduced to the guy, and we start to play. They hire my character in a tavern to join them exploring some ruins. Okay, not a big deal. We start going down, down into this dungeon, and we're walking down some tunnels with bad lighting. Score one for the thief, I could see in the dark, and they couldn't. I think I disarmed a trap or two. Kudos to the DM for bringing me into the party right off. As we explore this tunnel, the ranger is leading, the cleric is behind him, and I'm bringing up the rear. We run into some goblins, small group no more than five. Combat starts, we roll initiative. I roll poorly and go last. The humans are doing okay against the goblins. The DM asks me what my thief is going to do. I said. I look back down the darkened hallway, point dramatically and yell out, AMBUSH! They are coming up behind us! And run down the hall away from the fight. DM. There aren't any goblins down there. Me? Yeah, I know. Next round, they're still fighting. DM asks me what I'm doing. Me. I draw both daggers and start banging them against the stone walls. Then I yell out, They're here! Don't worry, I will hold them off! The lady, out of character, bursts out laughing. The DM does too. I start going on a dramatic description, in character, about the goblin ambush. But I'm very clear I need no help whatsoever and everyone needs to just stay where they are at. The guy, whom I have never roleplayed with before, does not look as amused as my friends and the DM. This continues, with the two humans handling the goblins, but getting a little beat up in the process. My thief finally comes back, wipes his bow dramatically and says, Don't worry guys, I drove them off. I've saved you. The lady is almost rolling on the floor now, and the DM is laughing too. The guy looks pissed. My thief walks over to the dead goblins and says, Well, time to loot the bodies. Let's see what they have. The guy. You don't get anything. You didn't help fight them. Me. What are you talking about? I held off the ambush that came up behind us. We would have been overrun if I hadn't done that. You should be thanking me, good sir. The guy. No. Why should we let you have anything? You weren't fighting. 
me, and in my mind this is the worst thing I did the whole time, remembering a line from AD&D 2nd edition player's handbook say, well, I think we're going to split the treasure equally because you look really banged up and I don't have a scratch on me. The guy. I shoot the thief with my bow. Now at this point, I'm a little flabbergasted. I didn't see that coming. He shoots at me. Now when you're making a thief, and especially when making a cowardly thief, you need to be able to do two things. Run and dodge. And my thief was really good at both. The guy totally missed. Still in character, I said, Whoa, no more of that or it gets ugly. The guy turns to the DM. I'll give you ten bucks if you make that a critical hit instead of a miss. The DM. Really? The guy pulls out his wallet, takes a ten dollar bill and hands it to the DM. The DM looks at me and says, Okay, it's a critical hit. Roll for double damage. I stood up and say, No, I don't think so. I'm done. Not the least, because I was pretty sure double damage from the ranger would kill my thief outright. I grab my books and my bag and start to walk. The lady tries to tell me to wait and let's talk about it. The DM is saying it's all just fun and the guy doesn't say a word. I like the lady, but not that much. I noped the fuck out and left. Never played with the GM or the guy again. Now, I get that maybe the guy didn't find my antics funny or he disagreed with what I did. But definitely, as far as the characters knew, I'd been fighting ambushing goblins. And to start a PvP like that with someone you just met, that was just poor sportsmanship. But straight up bribing the DM? And the DM taking it? No D&D is better than bad D&D like that. TLDR. Player starts PvP combat and then pays the GM real money for a critical hit against me when he misses. Edit. Because of some of the comments, I wanted to go back and add something. At no point during my descriptions of the imaginary combat with the goblins did the guy say anything to me. Nothing out of character like, Hey man, we really need you with the party. Or, Dude, quit fucking around and help us. If he had, I would have just said, Okay, they're gone and come running back. The lady and DM laughing so much encouraged to keep going, and neither of them said anything. That's why the PvP really took me by surprise. Story number two. DM nerfs my character to hell and back for one sentence of inconsequential flavor text. By the author, that Freddy is a jack. About one and a half years ago, I played a game of D&D 5e over Discord with a couple of people I barely knew that got introduced to me from a mutual friend. Back then, I didn't know many people who were into D&D, so even though I didn't know them very well, I was excited to get back into the game. We were a total of four players and one DM, but since this is a story between the DM and me, and the two other players have in my experience been nothing but welcoming, I'm going to leave them out of it. The campaign itself was homebrew. Our party was tossed between the front lines of a war and had to survive. I wouldn't call it grimdark, but the DM placed a lot of importance of all of our actions having far-reaching consequences, which sounded amazing to me at the time because I was largely used to very whimsical, more silly adventures. I joined the party a few sessions late. So as my character joins up with them, the DM asks me to visually describe my character, a furball barbarian named Pilgrim, in a few sentences. I say something along the lines of, He's a large, fat furball, wearing a travel coat that seems to consist more of stitches and hasty fixes than actual fabric. And that should have been that, but little did I know that the DM would hold this one sentence over my head for the rest of my time with the group. So a short time later, the 
party and I come across a group of Norse scavenging the remains of a battle of the day before. Since we were level 2 and two of our players had amassed some levels of exhaustion, we decided it was best to sneak past and make it to safety and have a rest. So of course, the DM asks us to roll for stealth, addressing me specifically and telling me to roll with disadvantage. My brain was operating on autopilot for a moment, so I just did it, failing miserably and drawing the Norse attention towards the party. At the time, I didn't feel bad about it, because I wasn't the only one who failed the check. But a few minutes later, my brain caught up with the action, and I made a mental note to ask the DM why he gave me disadvantage after the session, since by that time we had gained the upper hand in combat due to some lucky rolls and I didn't want to ruin the momentum. So I text the DM after the session in private, asking why he gave me disadvantage on the roll, and here's what I get back. I thought it would be realistic to give your character disadvantage on dexterity-based checks, since you insisted on making him fat. So, ignoring that in the fiction of the game, if a gnome is able to shove a grown orc to the ground if they have a lucky roll, a fat character should be able to move without shaking the ground and alerting every creature in the vicinity. Strong people, especially in the olden days, would be fat. To get abs, you need to have an incredibly specific workout plan, diet, and in extreme cases, a lot of dehydration. It's not even like I insisted for Pilgrim to be a sneaky rogue or acrobatic monk. He was a barbarian. He swung around a big axe, of course he had mass. So, I texted the DM back, telling him I was worried that this would give my character an unfair disadvantage. But he assuaged me, saying that he would give every character strengths and weaknesses befitting to their character. To quote John Mulaney, And then he didn't. That gnome shoving down an orc thing? Happened. A character who was raised as a slave to forge weapons for the military could read and write three languages. And my fat, goddamn barbarian got a disadvantage on every dexterity-based check. The DM also was really mean-spirited in the way he flavored every action my character took. If he fell, his body jiggled. If he sat, he plumped down. If he ran, he coughed and panted and dry heaved. If he interacted with any female NPCs, the DM took care to mention that they looked much more interested in talking to my party members. If you're waiting for the DM to get his comeuppance, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you. I quit after two more sessions and one more to try to reason with the DM in which he offered me to just retcon Pilgrim's fatness. But you know what? Fuck no. This was no longer fun. And no D&D is always better than bad D&D. Story number three. PC farmed a group message with everyone except me to organize to kill my PC and the worst campaign I've ever played in. By the author, Tracy Baker, 328. Considered making a throwaway, but fuck it. I don't care. A group of friends and I have been playing tabletop since 2017. Our first campaign was a D&D 5e ran by an experienced player who wasn't a great GM. He called off the campaign after a few months of play, and I started a campaign in 5e which ran for two years. Another player also later started a 5e campaign that is still ongoing, and another player now is DMing a World of Darkness game. I also ran a brief Starfinder game. All of this was pretty much within the same group of people. In July of 2019, the first GM decided he wanted to try running another 5e game with homebrew races, rules, and world building. This campaign is the topic of this post and has been progressively getting more difficult to enjoy. First of all, the DM based this campaign around a concept he had developed for novelization. It essentially revolves around a league of adolescents and young adults who are a special unit of soldiers for a certain nation's army. We each have a special character ability, which the DM calls Gifts. 
My character's gift is homebrew spellcasting options. Another character has special offensive bonuses, etc. Second, the DM changed up the normal group and added two players he knew from high school. Neither had tabletop experience. Our characters started out fine, spending the first few sessions orienting ourselves in the new world. The first red flag appeared rather quickly as we were told that our PCs are not really the focus of the story, but are essentially following around more powerful NPCs and dealing with things too petty for them in this massive war effort. Additionally, after we oriented ourselves and had our first two quote-unquote bosses, who we didn't fight actually, the powerful NPCs we served defeated them within 30 minute long narrative cutscenes. We were told we were getting to the meat of the campaign, which is literally a D100 table of random side quests. That's right, we are barely engaging with the world and our characters are flat out told we are less important than NPCs. And now we find out that the entire campaign is filler while we wait for NPCs to do actual plot. Some examples of these quests included Attend a play, investigate a tavern that has a roadside attraction, and several quests about rescuing miscellaneous orphan children that also have quote-unquote gifts. There are way too many underage children as NPCs, which is creepy in of itself, but that's a different post. I wouldn't mind this so much if we were allowed to interact with the world, but anytime myself or PCs try to make our own fun or interact in meaningful ways, we are punished. For example, one quest involved us investigating some low-level demons. We entered the town and everyone there was a human and racist against non-humans. Our party has no humans in it at all. The quest-giving NPC actually spit on party members. The quest-giver then took us to the demon site and my wizard put her to sleep so we could take them out without her. We go a ways away and fight the demons and return to find her murdered by another demon that just appeared from nowhere just to kill her. This was problematic for several reasons. This demon appeared in a safe area that we left her in was easily defeated by RPCs who were weaker than the NPC, and the sleep spell expires if the target takes damage while asleep. This character was killed off for seemingly no reason, and the DM said my character was now wanted for murdering her. I contested this, but the DM was firm and had the support of one of the two new players who scolded and blamed me in character. On the aforementioned tavern investigation, we found a tavern that advertised it had a horrible monster in the basement for adventurers to defeat. The monster was a single giant spider that was more of a pet, and the whole thing was supposed to be a gag. My character exited the basement and loudly proclaimed that she had defeated the monster, and the tavern goers booed at the party as a result. We were later told the tavern shut down permanently because I spoiled the fun, and we were hit with in-game punishments for doing so. Again, I was blamed in-game by the same player. Now this player took a leave of absence from the next game for five or so sessions due to personal reasons. However, he has decided today to rejoin next session. I was informed by a fellow player that this player had formed a group me with everyone in it except me, including the DM. This group me was dedicated to organizing to kill off my PC for quote unquote dominating the game. Now I'm a charismatic person in real life and often serve a leadership role in organizing parties and events. I'm no different than Tabletop, and my character in this campaign is literally a facey wizard bard. The new players aren't keen for decision making, and the other old players are content to just chill. So I do end up guiding discussions and decisions a lot. But nobody has ever expressed any issue with this until now. Thankfully, my fellow player was a good friend and told me immediately. 
I was already looking for the door because the campaign was frankly boring and had no interactivity due to the heavy railroading. I'm leaving this campaign and likely asking the DM to leave the campaign I'm currently running because this is wildly unprofessional and hurtful. I don't think I'll be missing much moving forward. I'm just hurt and it makes me feel like playing less overall. Edit. I wanted to clarify that this group me has had no interactions in it besides being formed by the initial player and the initial player proposing to kill mine off. The other players made no commentary and didn't like the messages. The group isn't conspiring to kill me, but this player is and the DM is doing nothing about it. Edit 2. I see a good number of commons playing devil's advocate at my expense because people think I am dominating the game. I will note that I frequently have elected to be silent at the table and allow other people to decide what we do, and the result is several instances where the whole table sits in silence for minutes at a time, waiting for someone to take initiative. It's hard being the only extrovert at the table, y'all. And those were today's stories. I hope you enjoyed your stay and that I will see you again soon. For there are always more stories to be shared.